Hey guys, after three months of almost a daily driving this ZBook Ultra G1A laptop, here are some thoughts I want to share with you. So what I use this laptop for during the past three months is first is that I run this laptop for my daily development works. Those are very big Microsoft projects. The solution file has multiple projects, like 100 or 200 projects needed to load up, load up in Visual Studio. And if it's a, like a Node.js project, the build process usually takes minutes long. So it's a good test for the performance, for the CPU performance, for the memory performance, and for the overall performance in that daily development I, I did with this. Zebo Culture G1A. That's the first thing. And the second thing I, I did the most is, of course, Teams meeting and uh, video conference and Outlook usage. I do a lot of uh, Teams conference every day. So the camera and the audio quality are very impactful for my work. That's a, that's a big factor for me to pick up a laptop. And the third thing is um, I usually like open Edge browser, uh, have like 10, have 10, 20 with web pages open all the time. My PR web pages and uh, wiki web pages and my debug environment, a lot of web pages open in Edge browser as well as in Chrome sometimes. AI clients are usually open on this laptop too. And also occasionally I do some light gaming on this on this one. I feel like it's a crime not to play any games at all on this computer, considering it has the most powerful iGPU in any laptops, period. Of course, you can say dedicated GPUs, even a 4060 or, or 4070 is more powerful than Ryzen AI Max um, iGPU, but still, this is a very capable iGPU that can play some kind of uh, AAA game and casual games, of course, and first person shooting games like CSGO for sure or CS2. So I did some light gaming too and that's the fifth thing. And the last thing I, I did most with this laptop is like, um, it's not the thing, but I typ typically connected this laptop with my external monitor. So I don't uh, quite rely on the internal display only because I need a larger display or displays to do my coding works, do my investigations and all kinds of work. So connecting to external monitors through USB 4 is the way I use this laptop the most. So now you know the scenarios, my like typical scenarios and what I use the Zippo Culture G1A4. These are a few thoughts after three months of daily driving this laptop. You'll see if this laptop fits your workflow too to decide if this is uh, like a perfect choice for you too. So the first thing, the CPU is really powerful. It is very, very fast with 64 to 128 gigabytes of memory. And notice that the memories are quad channel running at 8,000 megahertz. What does that mean? It means even the fastest LPDDR5, which runs at like 8,500 megahertz or something, this thing, this laptop, the Ryzen AI Max chip uh, with the embedded memory, it still runs twice as fast or provides twice as much as bandwidth. And for those uh, swappable, memory sticks, like running at 5,600 megahertz or 6,400 megahertz, this one is even faster. Provide triple the bandwidth of those memories. So my experience of using this laptop is really that I feel like the CPU is so fast and it never slows me down. Even though sometimes if a like multi-project software develop, uh, multi-project solution I loaded in Visual Studio, for example, I never feel it slows down. But sometimes like the, the fans crank in and spins really fast. I guess that's just that the CPU is pulling a lot of more power into this. And I can hear the fan, I can hear the fans are spinning faster. Um, I can hear there, there are some noise coming out and sometimes you're a little bit bothered by the sound, but it never slows down. It's really, really fast. And what, what's great, what's amazing is that if it's running on some light tasks, it's actually pretty quiet. Like the CPU doesn't need to like spin all its power to handle those light tasks. That's that's great. And with 64 gigabytes of RAM or even up to 128 gigabytes of RAM, running multiple tasks like loaded loaded up your projects and open have the browser open with like 20 to 30 web pages at the same same time doing Teams conference call still can be easily handled by this laptop. So that's the first. The CPU is really powerful. The CPU plus memory combo is very, very powerful. The second thing, if you have some AI tasks or AI local workload you need to like load it in, you have to choose at least a 64 gigabytes of memory. It's better to have even more than that, like 128 gigabytes. I think that's one of the advantages of the Ryzen AI Max chip. 
that it comes with 128 gigabytes of RAM. Because you need to like assign a portion of the memory to the GPU to uh, up to 75%. And if it's a 32 gigabytes of memory, it doesn't even sufficient on both sides. Like you, you have to reserve a certain amount of memory for the GPU and the rest of the memory has to be like served as normal memory for normal tasks. And that's not enough. In my case, because I don't really need to like load local LLM models, I assign most of the unified memory as like normal memory. I just reserve like one gigabytes for the iGPU and just trying to give the normal workload more memory to work with. And the third thing again about the iGPU, I feel like this is the first time that a integrated GPU on a laptop can do some proper gaming. Yeah, of course, um, discredited GPUs are more powerful, even 4060 or 4070 is more powerful than this. But playing games, like tr I tried AAA games, the Black Myth Wukong on it. I also tried uh, CS2. I also tried a, a like 10 years old RTS, which is also one of my favorite games, the StarCraft 2 on this one. I feel like this is the, the first laptop with iGPU that can properly handling those games. I know each, each generation Intel or AMD claims their iGPU has like a uh, 30%, 40%, 50% of uh, like performance increasement. But whenever I play uh, play games, a little bit serious games, I have to tune down the picture quality to the lowest and set to a low resolution, typically FHD. And I have to use frame generation to be able to play this game, barely play the game. And you know, if you optimize the performance trade-off for the image quality, the gaming performance, the 3D gaming performance becomes really worse, like really bad. It's like, uh, there are so many artifacts when turning on a frame gen and uh, it's not really like smooth the game is not playing really sco smoothly sometimes if the the scene is be becoming complicated to render the frame drops a lot and it becomes jittering but for this one the ryzen am max pro 395 the igpu 8060 with it i feel like it's the first time i can do some proper gaming i said that three times i mean it the fourth thing about charging this laptop the ZBook Ultra G1A only have USB Type-C charging connector, which is great. It's great. Uh, and the thing is, I got these like GAN charger. These are supposed to be lightweighted uh, chargers that is very portable and you can take that in your travel bag wherever you go. And this one is rated like 140 watts. But the thing is, even though the 140 watts uh, GAN charger is the same wattage output as the charger comes with this laptop. That's also a 140 watts charger. The GAN charger cannot fully supply the power to this laptop. And sometimes Windows still claims that this laptop needs a, like, a more powerful charger to get its full potential, something like that. Even though sometimes I don't have the out of box charger with me, a, um, a, a third party charger still can supply a decent power to to drive this laptop to do some heavy lifting work. But again, if you want to like release the full potential or the full power of the CPU, you have to use kind of use the out of box uh, charger and take that with you. And the fifth thing is that I really like the keyboard. The keyboard is great. The keys are tactic and the key cap size are decent. It's hard to mistype on this keyboard, which is great. And I liked aesthetics of this keyboard section. I know it's a little looking closer to what MacBook looks like. But uh, personally, I like the look of this keycaps. Also the trackpad is, is decent, it is good. It's not the best trackpad, not as good as a MacBook or a, a Surface laptop, but still it is very usable. It's the mechanical trackpad that you can click down. It's, uh, it's not as good as a haptic touchpad, but it's good. Also the speaker, I, I mentioned uh, it's sufficient, it's enough to do some really good team conference, teams meeting or conference calls. You can hear your team member's voice very clearly. It's loud, it's clear. When it comes to media consumption, the speakers are definitely not in the quality level of a MacBook Pro. Actually, I don't think any Windows lap laptop speakers are as good as MacBook Pros. But this one, if you're just optimizing that for conference calls, this is great. And the camera quality is amazing. When I first see the Poly Studio logo here, like or, or a badge here, uh, it says Poly Studio on the edge of the uh, laptop. It didn't ring any bell, or it, it didn't mean anything to me. But now I kind of feel like uh, it, it provides a really good camera quality, which is important to me, or important to anyone who do video conference calls all the time. Uh, actually, maybe it lives up its name, like a Poly Studio 
35 camera or something. Now the sixth point, it really comes to the downside of this laptop. The screen is really disappointing. On paper, this is a good display. Um, it's a 14 inch 2880 18,000 OLED display with fast refresh rate. But the thing is this screen, this display is not bright enough. It's 400 nits, it's kind of acceptable, but at the same time, because the screen is very reflective, it re kind of requires a higher brightness to kind of deflect that. I wish the screen can provide some sort of like anti-reflective or anti-glare coating or provide a higher brightness. So it's gonna be more usable and my eyes will enjoy using the screen more. What makes the screen even worse is that is how it supports the touch. I know touch screen is important to some, some of us, uh, I, I don't really need touch, but I understand some people rely on touch to do a lot of things on Windows. But there are two kinds of technologies and one of them to support touch, it requires like, uh, it adds a layer on top of the screen and make the screen feel like there are lots of grids on top of the screen. And if you move your eyes closer to the screen, especially in light content, you definitely can notice those grids. And it's very annoying to me. As I mentioned, I connected to external monitors to do most of my work. And at my office, I have like three 28 inch 4K monitors. The connection on this ZBook Ultra G1A is great. It has like USB type, USB 4, full USB 4 ports on both sides. It supports my three 4K 27 inch monitors. That's great. But whenever I have to like rely on the internal screen on this one, I kind of wish it provides a much better screen. Um, so when I travel, even though this laptop is not very heavy, it's just like 1.5 kilograms, I still constantly want to like reach out to my Surface laptop. The Surface laptop is definitely not much lighter than the ZBook Ultra G1A, but because the Pixel Sense display on this one is so good. It's so bright. It has anti-glare coating and I like the three by two aspector ratio. And also the 125% scaling on the Surface laptop is more to uh, the habit of my, I use the laptop. So I constantly want to reach the Surface laptop when I travel. But after using like a surf, the Surface for some like real big projects, I still want to kind of like, m I miss the ZBook Ultra G1A's power. So it's a, it's, I'm kind of struggled between these two laptops back and forth a lot. But for now, if I have access to external monitors, I'll for sure choose the ZBook Ultra G1A. Even though the Surface laptop's build quality is a little bit more premium than the ZBook Ultra G1A, the, G the G1A is solid, it's a solid, laptop has no flex. It's very, um, it seems very pre premium, but still the Surface laptop or the MacBook Pro is more premium in terms of build quality and material choice. Okay, now the conclusion. The ZBook Ultra G1A is a very great all around 14 inch Windows laptop that has its unique strengths. It has unified memory up to 128 gigabytes that's not commonly seen in any other 14 inch laptop. And it has very fast CPU and it has the most powerful iGPU of any laptops. So if your workflow can leverage any anything I mentioned above, this is a great choice. Of course, this is expensive, but the thing is this one is sold globally. So if, if you have access to the Z, HP ZBook Ultra G1A outside of the US, like in, in China or in, in Europe, maybe you can get a better price than where, what you can get in the US, but you still have the warranty globally, meaning that even you say, got this laptop outside of US, and because you have like the international warranty, you still can get a full warranty here in the US. If you're not locked in Windows ecosystems, and if you can choose MacBook Pro for your workloads, I feel like the MacBook Pro is still a better choice. It has longer battery life, it's running cooler and quieter, it has a better screen, it provides equivalent or even faster performance. But if you're locked into Windows ecosystem, this is one of the few really great 14 inch all around laptop out there for you to choose. All right, that's everything I wanna share after three months of using this ZBook Ultra G1A. Let me know if you have more questions in the comments, I'll try to answer you. And if you like the content of this video, please consider to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.